Uh, my name is Karen Rashid, and I'm uh, here in New York. I'm a designer. I've been uh, based here in New York for about 23 years now. And I just, uh, this past year, designed three new lighting fixtures uh, for Montana Arte. Um, and uh, one's called Apex, and then one's called Flux, and another one's called Kinks. And uh, they are kind of sensual, minimal, quite reductive lamps using some progressive technologies. Uh, so I'm thrilled to have this opportunity. Well, I, I designed uh, three three uh, lighting pictures for Fontana Arte, and uh, if I had to describe them all in three words, which is quite a task, I would say uh, sensual, minimal, and fluid. Well, the, the, you know, again, there's three lamps here, but I think all sim they're all similar in the sense that what it really inspires me, um, or inspired the collection and the ideas, was to do, uh, to use new technology, um, uh, LED technology, to afford us uh, to make very reductive products, really reductive things. And, uh, and I, now that I'm doing actually a lot in the world of buildings and hotels and restaurants and all kinds of interior projects, I think even more so, very much so, about light in itself. And I think light can go two ways. One is that it's completely seamless and disappears, and it's completely in the architecture, which is a bit of a preference. And if there are going to be fixtures, then I think the fixtures don't need to be so enormous or so heavy or so voluminous. They be, can kind of be an extension of the architecture. So the inspiration of these objects is really a kind of, really an extension of our, our physical um, walls, really. Well, I think Fontana Arte is, is, as a historic brand, is one of probably the most famous and most interesting Italian brands, I think. So it was um, uh, really an honor and a pleasure uh, to be asked to work with Fontana Arte. In fact, I was so thrilled and excited. And I know their history very, very well before I even met them, in a way. Um, and at the same time, in the history, when we look back at the, a lot of the lighting that they had in their catalog, and a lot of lighting in general, a lot of it was very much part of the analog world. So the products were quite material. And I think this is now we're really living in a kind of digital age. So I think you know, the next shift and step for Fontana Arte is, is again to do these uh, lighting that maybe speaks about this new technological digital age. My personal definition of innovation actually is. Uh, is to A, to do uh, original work, work that's never been done historically. I think B, innovation is very much based on behavioral, social and, and, and behavioral changes and shifts. So, that, so we're designing, we're doing things that are kind of relevant to the way the world is changing, the way we're changing, the way we behave and the way our social life is, or our working lives are, etc. And I think design as a subject is, is something that's a little bit misunderstood or misconstrued many times. Because a lot of people see design as style. And in fact, a lot of designers are forced, including myself sometimes, to just style things rather than actually design them. I think when we design, we're really embracing the moment in which we live. So we're taking all the criteria of that moment and really trying to imbue that, embed that in the product we design. Hence, it, it will be, uh, be very relevant at the time in which we live. So one could argue that design doesn't really exist without innovation. Um, and design doesn't really exist without technology. And, uh, and so design is really uh, powerful in that way. It's really, it's not just a creative act, then. it's kind of a social act, it's a, it's a behavioral act, it's a political act, and, and, and more than anything, it's an economic act. Mm -hmm. Well, the di digital age is, uh, is being an influence of mine, I think, since the first day when I was in university and starting to learn some really primitive programs like Fortran. And, uh, and I had this feeling, it was kind of, you know, it was turn of this 1979, 1980, and there's this moment of, of uh, enlightenment, in a sense, globally, about what the computers are going to do for us and what the digital age is going to do for us. And how I just really, at the end of the day, this common global language of zero and one binary notation is yeah. really going to change our complete landscape. So it was always an inspiration to me, always. And in fact, even in the colors I use, and the forms, and the feelings of a lot of my products, even if something's very like low tech, I'm trying to actually communicate, and speak, or find a kind of new aesthetic that what I would call the info aesthetic, the, the aesthetics of information, the day and age in which we live. And also, I think the visual age has been a big effect on me because I'm a, I'm a kind of believer that if I'm going to design the physical world, that I need to make it as 
beautiful and as colorful and as inspirational and as engaging and even as seductive as the digital ages. Mm-hmm.